Aho, Bujo in the Noy Makanaduk. Anin, Kagegabo in the Shinakas. Mikanak in Dudem, Mikanak Wajawing in Dunjaba. Beshoga Kaba Kang in Danungum. Apichigo Miguich Bizendawe. And what I said there was a traditional Ojibwe protocol greeting. I said hello, all of my relatives. My name is Kage Gabo. I'm Turtle Clan. I'm a descendant of Turtle Mountain. I live close to Minneapolis today, and I wanted to thank all of you for tuning in and listening to this live Ojibwe Word of the Day. Again, this is something I look forward to doing uh, on Thursday nights every week, and I'm always grateful if you take a few moments out of your day to learn and listen and talk about Ojibwe Anishinaabe, Chippewa culture, our spirituality, our ethics, our philosophy, our linguistics, our history, our, our way of being. So I always want to take a moment just to say thank you. Miigwech. Miigwech Bizendari. Thank you so much for listening. And tonight's word of the day is a word that I actually, uh, I was looking for during a class I was teaching earlier this week. Uh, with the White Earth uh, language table that I teach on Monday nights in Minneapolis. Uh, it's one that I absolutely love doing. And again, if you're in the cities, you are welcome to join us. And we were talking about using the tobacco. We're talking about how we pray for all of our relatives in each of the directions in Wabanong, Shawanong, in the east and in the south and in the west and in the north and there is a state of being when you're offering the tobacco that that you can use every day and it's something that I have been trying to use in my personal life every day and it comes after this period of awareness of watching oneself, of observing oneself, and observing your relationship with your relatives, and maintaining this idea of peace within you. And this word that I was looking for is bizan. Bizan. Now there are some dialect differences. In some cases, like something like bizan the go, may mean go ahead or go for it. The one that I'm using tonight is a uh, it's more of a description, and it shows up in other words that I wanted to talk about because I think it is so beautiful, uh, bizarre. And so this could be quietly, quiet, uh, with stillness, with peace, uh, not really like grasping for things. So it is this idea of calm, peace, tranquility, quietness that you can, uh, you can embrace in your everyday life and so some of the ways i've heard this used and this was one we used in immersion class when we were speaking to the children these were five and six year olds who when you are a five and six year old you know it is it's hard to sit still it's hard to be quiet you've got a lot of energy you've got a lot of life you've got a lot of excitement and especially when you're with your friends in your class. So one of the words that we had to remind our kids when we were teaching and when we were learning was bizanabin, bizanabin. And really, if we put both of these together, it has bizan, to be quiet, and abin, which is to sit. And it means to sit quietly, to sit quietly. Now, I think like, when some people translated that into English, it was more like, uh, be quiet. Uh, you know, not quite like shut up, but <laughs> please not, not talk. But the translation of this though, when I, when you break it down is, can you sit still with calmness and peace? And it's a beautiful phrase. And once you interpret it like that, knowing what that bizarre means, it to a child, you're already instilling this value that if you are able to begin practicing, and it takes practice, it actually takes practice, that you may in your life meet some people who can do this right away, effortlessly, and are great at it. And there are people who are like wonderful musicians, uh, per 
excellent artists who just are excel at this particular thing. But many of us have to try. It's something I have to try. My mind races all of the time. I can be a, a chronic overthinker. Um, and I'll go a little bit more into that in, in a bit, but while you're learning, while you're in the process of listening to someone, if you are able to be very quiet, if you're able to still yourself, be still, you are going to be able to listen and learn and watch so much more effectively. And so already as a child and uh, Gedumbigas, you're being too loud, you're being too noisy, for example, would be uh, one that children would probably hear and it would be Bizanovan. Try sitting with calmness. Try sitting with peace. And in that state, you're going to be able to, to learn very effectively. And you practice at it, and you practice at it, and you practice at it. And the more calm you begin attaining as a child and as you grow older, this is going to help you make very important decisions. Uh, you're not going to be bossed around by your emotions, by your thoughts, by your prejudices, by your fears, by your ambitions. You're going to be able to sit quietly and observe all of this taking place. And there are going to be moments when you need that calmness, when life begins happening. Uh, and to make the most clear and effective decisions, you're going to want to be calm. So that can be one of them, Bizan. And another one that I absolutely love is Bizanaya. Bizanaya. Here she's being, here she's uh, is quiet, here she is calm. And this is one that I was trying to get across in class. Having had a number of opportunities to study and learn with elders who were first language speakers, uh, very knowledgeable about the culture, about ceremony, about uh, just being an awesome Anishinaabe person. I noticed this quality in them and there were times I was actually envious of it. At this point in their life, nothing seemed to shake them. Like uh, they didn't, you really couldn't get a rise out of them. Despite hearing, you know, so much terrible news that we get in Indian country, in Anishinaabe King, uh, the nonstop of, not conflicts, but a, a very complicated relationship with our friends and neighbors and relatives, that nothing, nothing shook them. And I would see this, and often they had a smile, uh, maybe sly and a little bit wry, uh, but a calmness to them. And I began thinking, ah, this is what's happening. If you practice this as a young child, learning how to sit quietly, learning how to listen, practice that art of listening, practicing that awareness. Because you're aware of how you're acting with all of your relatives, you're watching yourself. And in that relationship with all of your relatives, you're seeing how you really are. And what our ancestors have passed down to us is that when you are calm in your mind, then your entire being can become calm. And then you are in a way to relate with all of your relatives in a very peaceful, in a very quiet, in a very non-intrusive uh, way as a good relative. And that can be a very beautiful thing. And it's something that I think that we need to practice with each other, this idea of having our, our spirits, our being, being calm. Because it can become so easy to, to become frustrated, to become angry, to become anxious. And when you're at calm, when you're at peace, you're able to deal with all of those things that may be causing you anger, frustration, anxiety, sadness. You can deal with them very effectively. And when you're doing that, you're going to be a wonderful relative. You're going to be changing everyone and everything around you. And you know, on a, on a personal note, this is when you can be incredibly effective. Um, there was a, a brief moment where I thought my son the, earlier this week had broke his arm. And I was just like, oh my gosh. Okay, let's go. Let's move from here. And as a younger man, 
I, I could see myself actually becoming very stressed, very worried, very anxious. Uh, but over the years, for about eight years of practicing this, this awareness of practicing this, this calmness, it, as I was driving back to Minneapolis from St. Cloud, uh, to remain calm, to say, okay, well, we're going to deal with this. We're going to go to the doctor. We're going to, uh, get this sorted out. When we get home, we'll get the splint back on your arm. And along the way, here's some, here's some sweet, something to keep your mind off of it, something to remain calm. So in turn, my calmness was going over to this, to this young boy who really was not feeling good at the time. Great news. His arm is fine. He's very healthy. Uh, he's already healed. So that was great. But at the moment, like my, if I were to get anxious, if I were to get worried, if I were to get frustrated, who knows if you know, I've been speeding, if I had not been paying attention to how I was driving, if any of that had spilled over on, onto Jack, that would have been not great to have dealt with it with, with calmness, which is something that I've actually had to practice and work on becomes uh, very, it, w it was very beneficial for both of us. So, uh, and I felt better too. That was so much better than feeling frustrated, scared, or anxious, and all those things that can come when someone who's very dear to you, who you love so much, who you've held in your arms as a little child, may be feeling bad. So it was, it was beneficial for both of us. And so on that note, I was thinking, I spoke about this at language table again, which you are all invited to join us. Uh, please feel free to, to join us on Monday nights. And thinking about that moment when, you know, when you're working with the tobacco, when, when you're praying, if you can have that moment of calmness, that quiet, that tranquility is really, that's what you're sending out to all of your relatives then. And then, how this happens, not just in ceremony, not just in prayer, but in everyday life, in the ceremony of everyday life, how we can become very beautiful and wonderful relatives to one another. So, mi iewa kero yan nongon, that's all I'm going to say this evening. Akpajigo mi kwech pizindawi. Thank you again so much for listening. And again, if you know someone who is interested in our language, our culture, our history, our spirituality, our linguistics, our ethics, uh, please feel free to like and share this video. Aha. Please, all of you, do take care. In the spirits, we'll decide when we see each other again.